taboo. Trying to kill you. Oh! Yes, it is a Friday. Oh, this feels a lot of giving. I'm, I'm just getting used to my new chair. The other one can go over there for now. My name is Hello Tom, and I have made an executive decision in the fact that I'm going to start watching Impact Wrestling. Because now I have my little wrestling app. <coughs> Ooh, it is a Red Wine Friday. I have my red wine pizza. It's about midnight. I do have to kind of rehydrate, though. If not, I'll feel like tomorrow. I just watched Impact Wrestling. Whoa. Where have I been all this time? I know. I, I think I stopped watching it. Because I couldn't figure out what wrestling to watch or what wrestling app to use and then it went off of pop tv paramount didn't carry it anymore paramount then went out of business and they're on the pursuit channel and on the pursuit channel they talk about walmart hunting guns Not necessarily my thing, but I cut it on the app I use. Do you want that app? Just email me. Hobo and girlfriend, gmail.com. But, oh my gosh, what was I missing? And for the first part, it starts out entirely different than WWE. They show highlights from the last show, which is good because it actually lets people like Bobo Tom get caught up on things. Um, so there was stuff about Eddie Edwards and Killer Cross, uh, Willie Mack, uh, Elegant, Rich Swan. Um, something color. Something. Oh, Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer is coming back. That was pretty cool. And a couple other other things. I think in addition to my WWE review, wow, I'm going to be doing a show at X for Wednesday. Wow. And every so often on Thursdays. Until Lucha Underground comes. If Lucha Underground comes back, and I'm still banned, I think, in the in nine countries. I have that video banned in nine countries. I have the death system in 12 systems. So hopefully tomorrow I'm going to catch a little Star Wars. But I know tomorrow I'm going to NXT. But enough about that. Let me start to rant and rave about Impact Wrestling. I couldn't believe it. Sabu's going to kill you. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. I'll tell you what, that might be my second... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, second greatest... Or my second current greatest wrestling catch phase. Next to... I'm the hammer! And he's the nail. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. I'll tell you what. The show started off again just with the kind of review from the last show. And it, it was really quick. I don't think it was five minutes. Which is good. It just gives me enough to say, okay, I get it. So the And then it just went into wrestling. And Sammy Callahan from OVE takes on Falabella. Wow, this was fun. Although, I think it spoiled me, or watching the spoilers spoiled me. And I'll, I'll get into that. 
But Fala Bala, I mean, for a Samoa. And that's what he kind of represents. I have no idea. All I know is that he dresses in the Mwashi and kind of spandex workout I wear. I cover up my thighs just to keep my legs warm. When do you leg days? Because cramps suck. But I'll tell you what, Fall of All is pretty good, dude. Sammy Callahan is also good. I forgot how good he is. But I only cover a few pay-per-views from Impact and Ring of Honor. And when he's in them, I'm like, wow. And then I forget about him. But it was fun, though. I mean... Start off, follow Bala. He's a classical Samoan barefoot wrestler. So just, he stuck his toe in Sammy Callahan's mouth. And someone you know, just said, that's not the dirtiest thing that's been in Sammy Callahan's mouth. Oh, wow. Very entertaining. Todd Callis might be my one of my favorite announcers now. I was really shocked, mainly because I had no idea what to expect. But when I did see it, wow! And there were the stomps. Again, he's just doing the hand stomps, the back stomps. This is Fala Bala. This is great. I mean, Sammy Callahan, he goes to the outside. Um, dude, he does some pretty... He does, he like spits on his hands and slaps them. And of course, Fall Ball does the same thing to him. And then now he gets into foot biting, which is. I'll be honest, I haven't watched Impact Wrestling since the days of the Broken Universe. And the fact that there's like foot biting, almost like Matt Hardy. I'll tell you what, it's not pretty, but it's. So funny though. And then, um, and the classic cross face blows where it's not a closed fist. It's, it's something different. And, I, and they mentioned the great mood is coming to impact. Oh, wow. I mean, Scarlet Bardo, I think the only down thing of this match is a, a Scarlet Bard, Scarlet Bordeaux. Um, the recap shows seem a lot hotter and a lot sexier than she does for everyday TV. Still not bad. Killer Cross. We're not worth, or I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But then, um, the rest, uh, <laughs> I mean, but good though. Then there was the rope assisted belly to belly. Never saw that before. They do stuff in Impact. And this is Impact with a four-sided ring. So it's just like WWE and every other wrestling event. So I'm like, wow, this is new. This, this is different. I'm, I'm, I'm reinvigorated as a wrestling fan. I'm happy as a wrestling fan. Raw is such a slog sometimes. SmackDown, however, is still really good, though. There's always that one... Down segment though in SmackDown, and you're like, "Well, I guess they need the, they need something." But I'll tell you what, for the most part, Impact was good. Um, it was a lazy cover from a Samoan drop, and I'm like, "He's not gonna win on that." It was tease of the Vader bomb. Wow! <laughs> and it was a. T Punches to the bare feet. I'm um, toe breaking. I mean, Fala Bala, he's fun. I want to get behind him. I want to cheer for him. I don't know, two pages of notes. I'll tell you what, there was so much I liked about him. Then the Chris Brothers came out, but Scarlett B Bordeaux um, um, took them out. She found herself between both Chris Brothers. The only thing, the Chris brothers looked weak because, like, she slapped them. She slapped the one, got up to the ring apron, 
did a senton onto both of them, which was great. I do like the fact that Impact teases and does imp does intergender wrestling more than WWE does. And I'll I'll get into that later. But I mean, this was fun though. Um, what else was there? Again, you have OVE shows up. Um, they had the. I didn't know he did a draping pile driver. I didn't even know you could do that. Tell you what, this stuff is impact is really fun, and there's only 44 more days till anniversary. I can darn near guarantee that I'm going to be doing a live stream about anniversary because this was pretty cool, though. I think it's Jan. I think it's um, July seventh. I think. Ooh, wow! It's getting late. Is that the red wine speaking? All right, cheese pump. The hobo cat's head napping. I she actually got to see me almost all day long. Today was a spa day, so I'm kind of feeling a nap coming along. But I'll tell you what, this match itself. I was wowed. I mean, my expectations for Impact Wrestling were, were down here. They might be up here. I mean, AEW's here. SmackDown's there. Raw's down there. Wow. And again, you can feel free to comment and email me. You can say, we want more Impact Wrestling from you, Hobo Tom. Well, I'll tell you what, this was a really good cheeseburger match. And then there's a couple promos, but the promos are good and with purpose. Like in Tommy Dreamer versus Rob Van Dam promo to the extreme. Oh, that's oh, now that match kind of disappointing. Until the very end. Again, Tranquilo, go through the whole show. The whole effing show. And then Johnny Impact had an interview with Melissa Santos while harkening back to their Lucha Underground days. Um, Michael Elgin's in the back. <laughs> Don Callis, I'm going to steal this from you. <laughs> Those two are that guy Johnny, in, Johnny Impact and Johnny Bravo. There's some turd cutters. I like that. I'm stealing it from you. Wow, what have I missed? Um, we go back to the ringside. There's some guy with his like forms and hands taped up with the Dean Ambrose tape. Moxley's going to AEW. Although he could. I, don't, I have no idea how the contracts are structured. But if they have Impact really wants to sign someone notable and still give him some kind of wiggle room and freedom to make saying, hey, listen, you only have so many dates here in Impact. Go do what you need to do. But every so often just show up with us. John Mox Moxley wouldn't be a bad guy to have. Again, we'll see what happens there. But then the next match was Madison Rain versus Ty Valkyrie. Wow. I didn't realize that they let the women wrestle for 20 minutes on a televised show, not a pay-per-view. Because I know pay-per-views are entirely different. Even pay-per-views, sometimes they don't even get 20 minutes. But I'll tell you what, it was the action was fast. Um, he kept on mentioning how Ty had the champion's advantage. Uh, the spear into the fast hands from Madison Rain onto Ty Valkyrie. It was really good. I'm like, this is fun. I haven't watched good women's wrestling. I think since well, NXT is always good. But the WWE women's matches are always hit or miss. 
I mean, again, you can always disagree with me because you don't know what you're talking about. You have to go back to the days of of AJ Lee and this person. Like, like, I'll remind you about the days of brawn panty matches and evening gown matches, mud wrestling matches, yeah, or hog swine matches, something like that. But I mean. They were doing good. I mean, it, it told the story. Both were going after each other's legs. Uh, Ty eventually started to kick at the hamstring of Madison Rain. And the announcers actually enhanced this by saying, you know, you, you, you take out someone's hamstrings, they can't walk. And they can't have that strong base. And then they kept on emphasizing that. And she kept on doing that. And it made sense. Whoa. What is in this thing, Fizzy Water? Where pro wrestling makes sense? Whoa. And then, um, it reversed itself. Madison Rain started to go after Ty's legs. So, so then, um, Ty had to adjust. Oh, no. Ty had to adjust her top. A few, times. a few times. It was funny. He was falling out. Congratulations to you, John Morrison. Yeah. I think one of my subscribers, Bumpslicks, put it best when when I gave a match surf and surf rating. Johnny Mundo surfs her turf. Oh! <laughs> so she had to adjust her top a couple times. That's funny. And she wears that black bra, too. Although there was one instance where, where there was like some, some, some nude undergarments. Again. Patience, folks. And it was a really fun match. I can talk in the ring. I mean... She she knows how to get get the ref involved. There was some woman with a CM Punk shirt too. You know that would never be allowed in WWE. Um, again, there was some rough spots. Um, eventually, Taya hit the um, Cry of the Valkyries, which is her finisher. She won. But I'll tell you what, though, I thoroughly enjoyed this match. I don't think I've ever said this about any women's match. Over the course of a whole year, maybe? But this was a surf and turf quality match. And then Rosemary came out with Sue Young. Sue Young's in the chain. Rosemary's probably going to challenge for the um, knockouts. I mean, that was just awesome, though. I think they were like chanting. The crowd was a very smarky crowd, too. They were chanting Ty and Linda. So, again, it's good stuff. Um, then there was. Oh, well, I have no idea what these two were. But they were at Pat's Steakhouse eating cheesesteaks. That's two rednecks. And, gee, I forget their names. But, again, they said <laughs> there, there were so many Philadelphia references. It was amazing. There's a great quote from Rocky where Mick goes, Rock, stay away from the women. They weaken the legs. So I guess these two rednecks stayed away from smoking. They stayed away from beer. Which I do for 40 days. But hey, they also stayed away from the women. I think they stayed away from the beer for like four days. They were sober. And then they stayed away from the women. Because the women weaken their legs while eating cheesesteaks. So they're like, okay, well, you know what? It's not my fault we lost. You need to eat more calories. You're having cheesesteak and a beer. Like, that's awesome. Oh, wow. I just can't believe I missed this, though. I mean, I couldn't believe the wrestling quality was so good. I mean, they had their backstage segments. 
They were short. Probably scripted. But a few of them had like bullet points to it. Again, the really non stage stuff just felt like, okay, talk about your match with Tommy Dreamer. Um, talk about your match. I'm sorry. Um, Tommy Dreamer, talk about your match with RVD. Mention ECW. <laughs> Tommy Dreamer did that. Again, your promo mentioned this. Mention this. Oh, and Mike Elgin will be standing behind you. He did that. The scripted promos, short to the point. I mean, that's all you ask from these scripted promos. I mean, <clears throat> oh, that hurt. But that's all you ask. I mean, if you have a scripted promo, do your lines, keep it believable, and be done. Don't have it drag out ever like Monday night raw. I mean, those were fun though. Paid Rosemary and um, the the Demon Deacon James, whatever. How he wants to have Sue Young back, the undead bride, and he calls himself a folk old. Oh, wow. They're using language on this show. That's awesome. And if you have to know what a cuckold is, um, go look it up. Go, go ask your parents. Again, it's just like she's on a mission um, to become the knockout champion. It was fun. I'm Eddie Edwards with another promo of his. Again, very short to the Short to the point. That's all you need. Um, and the rascals did another scripted thing. Oh, it looked like that 70s show. This was funny. I was entertained. Then you had another great tag team match with the North consisting of um, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander versus LAX. Santiago and someone else, and Conan let them down. Oh, wow. I was so shocked. I mean, granted, SmackDown has really good tag team matches. They had the, um, or at least for a while, they had the better tag team division. And now Raw has a pretty good tag team division. I'll tell you what, that Usos revival match that was really good. This rivaled it, though. I mean, the North, I, whenever a guy wears old school wrestling headgear, I like that. Next time for Impact, I'll bring out my old school wrestling headgear. And, I mean, it was just fun, though. It was great tag team work by both teams. I love the fact that there's some amateurs, amateur wrestling moves involved. Um, tell you what, that, that 2X double gotch, that double gotch neutralizer, the rolling cutters, Everything they put together was really in a tag team. It made them felt like these were just weren't two single guys put together in a tag team. But these were one cohesive tag team that's, that's been together for a while. And it really showed. And it was a fun match. LAX won. Um, oh, what they call them? The Puerto Rican Nightmares. Or something like that. Again, it was it was good. The commentary, the commentary in this actually really enhanced the matches. It brought some background, not the whole boring long story like like Raw would do between Sasha Banks and Bailey and how they did this and how they love each other and how they saw felt. No, it was a couple poignant lines. It made sense. It gave you context, and it was good. I mean, this match, LAX won. Again, surf and turf quality match. I mean, really, the whole opening of the show was amazing. Oh, even that was good.
So next we have uh, Glenn G Gilberto versus Ashley Vox, who, who could be Jobber McJobbers out of Philadelphia. And it was great because he came out. Um, he said he was going to do the match while while giving commentary, so 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 Don Callis and his partner could shut up and turn their mics off. In fact, he told the production team turn their mics off. And he just he was wrestling with one hand because he was holding the mic in the other. And this is good because it, it introduces inner inner tag team. It wasn't awkward though. It felt like a wrestling match. I mean, it wasn't Suzuki just, just slapping Asuka around or, or whatever she was back back in the days of old New Japan pro wrestling. Or um, I think it was All Japan Wrestling. Or was it FMW? Something back then. Like Again, just, just um, YouTube, Minoru Suzuki and Asuka. And that'll, and it's just like her, like it's like him, oh, like literally just like your open hand laps, like seemed like twenty times. After the first five, you're like, ooh, but this wasn't that. I mean, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and even the announcers call him Disco. Because, again, this is Disco Inferno. Um, Glenn Kim Gilberto. I can't believe he's still wrestling. <laughs> but <laughs> he started. Again, he, 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 he degraded her. It wasn't sexist, it was funny. I guess. Because <laughs> he's like, do you work at the local Hooters? <laughs> and then it's like, who are you dating backstage? So he's wrestling while commentating. It's one of those things, it, it, it's terrible, but it's so bad, it's good. And again, Ashley, he, he put her in the headlock, he's like, I have you in the headlock now. <laughs> he calls spots. Oh, here we go, armbar, hip toss. I'm going to put you in the headlock now and go for a headlock take takedown. It's like, well, Ashley, you want to give up and end this now? And she's like, no. Nah. Referee's like, hey, hey, ref, aren't you supposed to do your job? It's like, the well, ref's like, hey. She didn't say anything. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> the crowd was chanting, you still suck. <laughs> and they were still calling him Disco Inferno. Um... <laughs> this Kong spot. Ashley did get in some offense, which is good. Um, hit a roll up. Eventually, he's like, "No, no, no. Okay, okay. I, I'm done." To, uh, uh, he didn't say it, but but you know he was done toying with her because then he hit her with a stunner. And then as he pinned her, he's like, "Oh, look at that! She kicked out. She has some fight left in her. I'll have to use my finisher again." I like the fact that he referenced the finisher <laughs> like a video game. It was good. Um, and then, of course, Tessa Blanchard came down. And again, the fact that they're doing this, it's not degrading. It's not awkward. It doesn't make you feel dirty for watching. Oh, except for the fact that Ashley Vox doesn't wear black panties. She wears nude color panties. Oh, again, this guy Hobo Tom. Well, I guess is probably not single because you saw him, the person who introduced myself as a, as my girlfriend for my impact. I guess I'm not single. Sorry, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. But we'll see tomorrow. Other well, issue tomorrow. Trust me, you might find out tomorrow, YouTube. Again, it didn't feel awkward. It didn't feel icky. It felt like a wrestling match. It felt like the guy was being. It felt like the guy was being a jerk. But it wasn't. Again, icky feeling. I guess it was a wrest. It was. Hey, listen. This was a wrestling match. 
he didn't punch her. It was wrestling holds. Yes, he degraded her, but he never called her anything bad. Working at Hooters? Bad? Uh, and Tessa Blanchard came out and made the save. Um, so this is, this is going to set up for Slammiversary, probably um, Glenn Gilberto versus Tessa Blanchard. That should be fun, though. Um, overall, the Smash, I'll tell you what. I enjoyed it. Only because I didn't know this, but Impact Wrestling... They have dusted finishes too. It was a dusted finish, baby. And an impact dusty finishes actually means nobody wins. Well, no one wins. Wow. WWE, someone wins. And WCW, nobody won. Ooh. That's good. The dusty went up. Ooh, this a dusty ham sandwich. And there was a Killer Cross interview. That was kind of cool. Killer Cross looks beastly looking. He looks like the assassin. He looks like a like a Jack Loki. Then there was again a little bit of a promo for Dreamer and RVD. Then there was an exhibition between. One half of the Desi Hit Squad. Rahut. Raju. I hope I got that right. Versus Petey Williams. Canadian Destroyer. Versus Ace Austin. Who's quickly very charismatic. And Dez from the Rascals. And that was... um Killshot. Oh, no. I forget. I know he wrestled in Lucha Underground. I forget who he was. I'll tell you what, though. This was fun. The only thing they it was, it was the only thing I can say is it was a spot fest. Um, Ace Austin is a magician. I mean, he did the the, the, the paper cut with a card that he like used from out of nowhere. The Ace that he produced out of Ace playing card that he produced out of nowhere. Ooh. That was good, though. And they were all doing flying and flippy stuff. Hey. I like flying and flippy stuff. Number one. Pedro. Number one. In my book, when they start doing that flippy, flippy stuff. Um, Ace was a little botchy. He seemed to botch something in the corner. It wasn't that bad. He kind of shrugged it off, said, I'll do something else. Which is just pure professionalism. I mean, of course, you have the Canadian Destroyers. You know, that <laughs> move, which was utterly amazing. And Des won. I'll tell you what, it was fun and fast. I'm going to stick with my original rating because this was a match. And then we get to the main event of the evening. Tommy Dreamer versus Rob Van Dam. The whole Friday show. Oh, who's that? Oh, Lydia. Ooh. Yes, you guys met her. I did too. Thank you again. Chirp. Reef. Oh, that's, that's fishing stuff. I can't do that. Uh, what did I say to her? Oh, she just double texted. So he'll know. Okay. I'll do that. I can do that. I'm working tomorrow anyway, so I have, I have free time. Um, so Tommy Tom Dreamer versus Rob Van Dam. I mean, Dreamer is enjoying this, I and mean, he's he's enjoying being back in Philadelphia in the ring. The only thing I can say, and I'll preface this. By saying I saw them in their prime between 1990 and 1999 when they were still in ECW. So I saw Tommy Dreamer, I saw prime, prime, 
prime Tommy Dreamer. I saw prime Rob Van Dam. They both seemed a little like a half step slower. I mean, the crowd is going absolutely bonkers. Again, I'm, I'm biased in this match. Only because I saw them when they were 100%. They're old. Listen, there are only two undefeated on the entire earth. Mother Nature and Father Time. If Mother Nature says the seas are going to be five to seven feet, you are not going out in the ocean in a 19-foot fishing boat. And you know what? 19-foot fishing boat, my hiney. You're not going out in a 30-foot fishing boat in five to seven foot seas. That's stupid. It's effing stupid. Father time. Everyone gets old. I have I've dislocated this shoulder twice. This one once. Destroyed my one knee. Never to surgery, but but bad enough. Broke right there. Broke there. Broke there. So when I have to handle stuff the next day, I'm like, why does this hurt? When I'm playing basketball, there's a pickup basketball game at the gym. Or I'm doing some leg lifts. I'm like, why does this leg hurt? Shoulders, I know I'll never have the strength I used to have. I'm coming home from a fishing trip. Oh, heck. Father time. And you can ask any athlete, any, you know what? It's universal. Anyone. Father time always wins. Our body gets old. I still think I can do things that a 20, that a 23 year old can do. When I try those things, a 23 year old can do easily. I feel like a 50 year old man. At 43. So, Father Time, again, any athlete, you can ask even Michael Jordan. Father Time beat Michael Jordan. <laughs> Father Time beats everyone. The two truly undefeated. Mother Nature and Father Time. Some people say, yeah, well, well, well sex is undefeated. No. Eh. Eventually... Again, when you get older, you're like, okay, it's time to tranquilo. And after, and e even Asian women, Asian women who, who are 60 years old look like they're 30. But when they're 90 years old, they look like they're 103. It shows up for everyone, folks. No secret, though. So, again, I saw them in their primes. So I'm a little bit. How do I put it? Jaded or biased? Um, again, though, the crowd was hot, though. They were just chanting ECW, ECW. The whole effing show, the whole effing show. Um, what else? You still have it. Fight forever. You're our hero. And But for the most part, the match was fun. I mean, it was a very classic. Good classic chain wrestling from these two back in their ECW days. Of course, the cherry got involved. It was a standoff. Um, the, the water to the eyes. Um, then there was a, a, a hit him over the head, head with the with the water bottle. Gee, I'm sure Rob Van Dam. That's never happened to him before. Yeah, right. Chair table shots, kendo sticks. And God knows what New Jack would bring to the ring. I'm getting classic Rob Van Dam. I mean, class, classic Tommy Dreamer. I mean, it was fun, though. I mean, there were players involved. The Spike DDT was awesome. I hit a pile driver not on the chair because that, that would have been finisher. Um, it was fun. Um, there was no true finish. Or, oh, no, actually there was. I'm sorry. Um... RVD pin Tommy Dreamer. Then the North comes in. Spoils the moment. Um, they chant, they chant, break the tables. It's awesome. But the lights went out. 
and it went dark, and there was a guy in the ring, and all he had to do was point upward. Sabu showed up. Sabu. Sabu. Sabu's going to kill you. And the genie showed up, and she showed up in multiple chairs. She would toss him to Sabu. Sabu would throw it at someone. Toss another chair, throw it at someone else. But one person caught the chair. Wrong thing to do. Because then it was a Van Daminator. Sabu. I actually met him once. Really, really nice guy. Um, I was in the mall at Battle Grand Rap. Yeah, it was Battle Creek. That was closer to Kalamazoo. The guy walks in the walks in the food court area. I'm there getting a snack. It was awesome. His arms were all messed up. I'm like, he has long hair. His arms are all messed. He go ask. So I went up to him. Are you? And he's like, you went from this. this. Shook my hand. So it's nice to meet you. I'm like, oh my god, you're sad. I'm very quietly, I'm like, oh, I've seen your matches, dude. You're awesome. Oh, thanks. Thank you for everything. Very humble, very quiet, very soft spoken. I mean, I shook his hands. Thank you. He had that look of genuine appreciation on his face. He went shopping. I finished my, my meal or snack. And that was it. The thing is, and I've told other people this, I'll say about 80% of the pro wrestlers you meet, if you meet them in the right circumstance, are truly, genuinely nice people. And if you see them in the mall and just, and they do that, they have that one tell. And if you're really cool about it, they don't mind talking to you. For a couple of minutes, just don't like wait at the airport when they're like flying in. Because I've heard Seth Rollins can be a dick about that, but if, but if I was on a right flight from somewhere and like trying to get to my hotel room, I wouldn't want to talk to anyone either. If I was munching on a piece of pizza in, in the mall, yeah, I'm Seth Rollins, good to meet you. Yes, you're awesome. I didn't ask him for any signatures. It was just nice enough to know that that he acknowledged him, himself as Sabu. Shook my hand, and, I'm, and it's one of those truly genuine moments I had. And I'll tell you, and, and that match, I downgraded it because it, I felt it was a ham sandwich match. And that's only because I, I saw them in their prime, though. When you see someone in their prime versus, oh, gee. 30 years later? Wow. Was I ever that young? No. 20 year, twenty something years later. Yeah, Father Time wins, folks. And that's that was Impact. And I'll tell you what, it has me hooked. Um, again, just some news and notes. Tomorrow you can see this guy. Hobo Tom. Here in Daytona Beach. I'll probably be there 6.30 to 7. I'll probably be waiting in line. <laughs> With my pervy Candice LeRae picture. It's Memorial Day weekend. She signs this. This goes on the door of wrestling. Um, and then again, it's going to be... I'll put up the video uh, probably later that night. If not Sunday morning. Sunday, I'm going to do a all-in, double-or-nothing review. I've already given my predictions with my girlfriend. Ooh. Then Monday is going to be a double show for Daytona Beach Bum Fight League and Monday Night Raw. Tuesday, 
is SmackDown. And Friday will be Impact Wrestling again because I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hope you guys did too. Um, I'll see everyone later. Well, I got to end this. Bye.